Hello everyone, I'm Kai and welcome to another video from Love Lawns. So, you're thinking of starting a new lawn mowing and garden maintenance business, but you don't know where to start. There's a lot to think about. You might be feeling a bit overwhelmed with it all, but don't worry, the most exciting thing is you've decided to start your own business, to be your own boss to work in the great outdoors. And although it's bloody hot in the summer here, and it is hard work, in my humble opinion, it is by far one of the best jobs you can do in the whole world. So in this video, I wanna break down some of the items needed to give your business the best chance of success from the ground up. Obviously, this is something we've already been through with Love Lawns. We started the business from the ground up about five years ago now. So we've implemented everything that we're talking about in this video, we have implemented throughout our business along the way. So it's kind of proven, it does work, and it's something that you would be able to take uh, different tools, but you'll be able to take the principles from this video and you'll be able to use them through throughout any kind of new business starter or any new ideas that you've got going into the future, to be honest. It's uh, the principles of it are the same for any kind of business. So in this video, we're gonna be discussing the items needed when you start your business, such as the vehicles, the trailer, the equipment, the recommended equipment, uh, the stuff to get started with, but also the stuff that you kind of progress into as you start doing more and more other than just lawn mowing. Uh, the web stuff, websites, logos, branding, all those items that are necessary when you start your business to to just give you the best starting place really to promote you know growth and and get out there as quickly and as efficiently as you can so that's everything we're going to talk about in this video in a future video i want to talk about how we manage clients how we do the scheduling and that kind of side of things but for now let's get stuck into the tools that we need to start a new lawn mowing and garden maintenance business. Let's do it. The main three tools you're gonna to need for mowing lawns is a lawn mower, a line trimmer, or a whippersnipper as they call them here in Australia, and a blower. With those three tools, you can go and mow lawns all day long. If you wanna take it up a notch, I'd recommend getting a handheld hedger, a pole hedger, and a small chainsaw. And with that collection of tools there, you'll be able to do a surprising amount of work. Obviously, don't forget your jerry cans, two jerry cans, one for normal fuel, one for two-stroke fuel. Don't forget the trimmer line for the line trimmer. I recommend either 2.4 or 2.7 mil round line. And don't forget your grass bags. So here in Australia, there's a place called Bunnings, and I buy the big green ones for like the bigger clippings from the hedges and stuff like that. And I get the small white ones that'll fit about three 70 litre Honda bags of grass in them, and then I chuck them in the back of the trailer. If you're fortunate enough to buy a tipper trailer when you start out, which is very expensive, um, then you can just chuck it all in the trailer, get to the tip and empty it out, easy peasy. But if you haven't got a tipper trailer, I recommend bagging all the sort of clippings, the grass clippings and the hedge clippings, because it's just way more, uh, it's way easier to empty them at the tip than trying to rake out loads of dead, smelly, moldy wet grass um, that's not fun at all so bags always a good shout you're also going to want to get yourself some handheld tools such as a metal shovel for digging a plastic wide shovel for shoveling mulch and leaves and things like that you're also going to want a metal rake for doing moving dirt and heavier items, along with a plastic larger rake for doing leaves and things like that. Also, grab yourself a set of shears, a set of secateurs, and a set of handheld loppers. And with that little collection of tools, along with the mower and the snipper and all that from earlier, you should be able to do about probably 90% of the maintenance work. Occasionally, you're gonna need something special, like, you know, if you're doing uh, if you're doing lawn renovations, then you need different tools for that. But generally for most of the maintenance stuff that you're gonna be doing when you start out, that little collection of tools should see you good for pretty much everything, really. 
Just before we jump into the vehicle section, I wanted to point out a couple of other items that I found quite useful throughout our business. So the first one would be a couple of different size ladders. Get a tall one for the taller stuff, obviously, but get yourself a, a smaller one as well that's not so inconvenient to take on and off the trailer or on and off the ute all the time. If you've just got one big ladder, which you do need, but if you've just got one ladder, you're, you just you never want to take it off the off the ute, and it becomes a pain. So get two ladders. Get yourself a big one for the bigger stuff, but get yourself a small ladder that's convenient to use as well. Also, a couple of step ladders, or even those little platforms that you can get, really helpful. Along with a wheelbarrow, that's always pretty helpful as well. And a couple of sort of those black kind of plastic bins that you can get. So just when you're doing the weeding or you're just trying to, you know, sometimes you have to chuck the mulch around in the beds, it's easier than a wheelbarrow. So those few items there, and also the maintenance side of the tools that you've just spent a fortune on. So things like some WD-40, both the lubricant and the cleaning. They do a whole bunch of cleaning ones as well, which are all natural, I think lemon and citrus products and stuff like that, which are really good. Um, get yourself some canola oil to, sp to spray on the hedger blades before you use them because the canola oil doesn't damage the leaf of the hedge like the WD-40 can. Uh, also lanolin oil is pretty good for the blades. Honda do a good one. And um, just the general cleaning, oiling and maintenance of all your tools. If you keep on top of that and you look after them, they'll last a long time. But it's quite surprising how quickly they deteriorate if you don't keep on top of it. Because especially here in Australia where the environment's so harsh that your tools get a bit of a hammering, so you need to look after them. And if you look after them, you'll get years of life out of them. So the more you look after them, the more money they'll make for you, which is the main thing, really. And, and it's safe, you know, you, keep, you change the blades on your mower regularly and change not just the blades, change the washers and the bolts and the nuts as well. Because the last thing you want is a blade flying off a mower. Like it's no fun. So, yeah, moving on to the vehicles and the trailer section. In terms of vehicles, when you're first starting out, I would recommend getting yourself a ute and a trailer. There are other options. You can go for a, a van, you can go for a flatbed truck style. They're quite a bit more expensive, and until you kind of know all the gear you want to use and, and the way that you're going to be running the business, just start out with what you need, which is a ute and a trailer. And I'd recommend, you can either get like a dual cab ute, you know, a normal dual cab ute. I've got a Volkswagen Amarok and that's been brilliant. But for work, I would probably recommend something like a single cab Hilux with a tray. And you can either get a box on the back and then you can put loads of stuff in the back of there and a trailer. So a, a single cab ute and a trailer when you're starting off is the best bet. At the moment, I would buy a new ute rather than a used one. Because it's a business purchase, it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy a used one, uh, especially with how the prices are at the moment. So buy a, a new ute, I would recommend something like a, a single cab Hilux Trayback or a BT50, something along, along those lines. Trailer wise, I'd buy a new trailer as well. And I would probably buy, if I knew, if you knew enough about what you were doing, I would buy a custom trailer and you'd have it kind of built to the specifications that you wanted. But when you're first starting out, you don't know those sort of details. So you can, you know, there's places on the Gold Coast here all over the place but there's a couple i know of on the gold coast here that build specific landscaping and mowing trailers and they've thought about quite a lot of the stuff so probably just go with one of them to start with run it for a year make a note of all the things that do and don't work and how you want to you know update it on version two and you'll probably keep that trailer for a couple of years <coughs> excuse me used trailers especially landscaping trailers are pretty average normally they're a bit rusty and bit average so I'd probably just buy a new one a couple of guys on the Goldie I'd recommend is NT trailers and top line trailers they seem to be building some pretty good quality stuff um, there's a lot out there but they're not all good so just do your research in whatever area you're in you've also got the option of a van and I wouldn't recommend the smaller vans like a transit I would recommend a larger one like a crafter a sprinter or a master from obviously VW Mercedes and Renault the pluses to those is that you can get everything inside them and um, stick a tow ball on it and you can still tow a trailer if you need to it's a bit long but you can um, but you can get everything inside them which is pretty good at the end of the day you just press a button and it's all locked up the downside to that is that all your tools are inside the van if someone gets in the van 
all your tools are gone. I guess you could argue the same with a trailer. Um, a trailer and a ute set, if they want to take them, they will, I suppose, but I don't, don't go out there thinking like that, so. But it's worth considering. So you've got the ute and the trailer to start with. Potentially a van, there's a big difference in price though. A ute and a trailer is gonna set you back brand new, probably about 40 grand for both. A van will set you back about 45 to 70, depending on which brand and size you go for. So bear that in mind when you're making your decisions. And the other thing to think about is how are you gonna advertise your vehicle on the actual trailer or van? It's a lot cheaper to get a trailer logoed up, stick it up and sign written than it is to get a van done. So another expense that's a little bit cheaper with a trailer. The other thing to bear in mind if you get a ute in a trailer and you've never towed before, is it takes a bit of getting used to to reverse and park and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't take long to get used to, but it's a learning curve. With a van, you're probably all right. So just bear that in mind when you're making your decisions, I guess. So my recommendation, as I've said, is a ute and a trailer to start with. Let's move on to websites, branding, logos, and all that side of stuff. So get yourself a professional logo. And it doesn't have to, have to cost the earth. You can get yourself a logo from places like um, Fiverr, 99designs, anything like that. But make sure that your designer gives you the logo and the files that you need. So obviously you want your colored version and you want a black and white version and you want a flipped version of the black and white as well. And also make sure that they give you the necessary files that you need um, for the different, you know, for print, and for digital use. So for print, you're gonna want a high res file, either a PDF, an, an Adobe Illustrator file, an AI file, or an EPS file. Those are the files that the printers are gonna ask you for when you wanna get your t-shirts printed, or you wanna get the uh, business cards done, things like that. And the other files you need are like a digital version. So that'll be stuff for social media, for Facebook posts, on the website, things like that. So those files are gonna be a PNG file, a JPEG file, and you want a high-res JPEG and a low-res, like web-use JPEG. PNGs are normally the ones with a transparent background. So those are good for the logo, good for the website, um, good for social media posts, because they can go on a picture and you haven't know, got the background and stuff. So those are probably the main files to look out for when you get a logo done. But also make sure that the designer, if you haven't already um, finalize all the colors and stuff. When the designer does your logo, whatever colors they use within that logo, make sure you get a, a brand guide, if you like, which tells you the CMYK colors, which is what the printer will use, and the RGB colors, the exact color um, values. So you can replicate and you can reuse those colors throughout your, your website, in your van design, in your trailer design, in your print, anything, in your business cards, you need to know what those colors are. So if you don't already know, make sure when you get your logo done that your designer gives you a sheet of paper or a printout or anything with those colors on, those values. Next, let's talk about websites. Just like when you get a logo done, you wanna get a website done by a professional. And again, that doesn't have to cost a fortune, but that probably will be one of the more expensive um, purchases when you set up your new business. You can do it yourself with things like Wix and Squarespace to a degree, but if you want a, a, a website that's gonna work and it's gonna be worth doing, get it done by a professional. And the reasons for that are they know how to create, or they should know how to create a website that is fully optimized for Google. You need, it, you need to, to know what you're doing so you can make every single part of the website fully optimized so you get seen in, search rank, in searches on, on the front page. And by that I mean it needs to be, all the SEO needs to be perfect. All the images need to have alt tags. All the headings and the paragraphs, they all need to, to work together to create a coherent um, story, if you like, with all the right tag, all the right um, search keywords and things like that, but not in a way that's, that, that sounds robotic because Google doesn't like that either. So 
So get a professional to do your website. And again, you can find um, places such as Fiverr. I'm not sure if they do websites on Fiverr, but places similar where you can, you can get someone to do it for a relatively good price. But they're a bit hit and miss, to be honest, those, those kind of ones, because you do need someone that's professional. And I would recommend going local with this, because you want to be able to go in and talk to them. And, and you know, it, it, they, you need to get to know each other so they can bring out the best in you and translate that into a presence online. Because a website is part of who you are. It's the first thing that a person, a, a potential client sees. So, I mean, it's, they'll see that before they even talk to you. So you need to draw them in. So it needs to be done in a professional way that works, not only for robots to read, but also for people to read. So good imagery, try not to use stock imagery, which is a bit difficult when you first start because you haven't been working much, but try to get some non-stock imagery of you personally working if you can and um, and get a professional to build it you want to be ranked you know you on google which is where everyone searches for now for anything you want to be on that page one with with search terms for example for me here on the gold coast gold coast lawn mowing gold coast hedging uh, irrigation gold coast the sort of things that people search for if you're looking for a plumber you go Gold Coast plumber you know you won't search for specific terms so the the key is to build a website that will show up on Google with those very specific but also very broad search terms and it won't happen straight away you'll build the website and it will take realistically probably about six months if it's a good website to get on those first two or three pages and it might take a bit longer to get onto page one so and no matter what anyone says to you, they can't do it any quicker. It's a very natural process and you need to allow time for it to, to, to work its way up the ranks. What you can do though is Google Ads. So you build yourself a really good website and organically it will rise to the top eventually. But if you want to speed the process up, budget around about, here in Australia for us, we budgeted at the start about $300 a month. And that gives you, I can't remember what it is now, a certain amount of clicks per month. Um, but that will put your, your web page, your presence on page one instantly, whilst your website moves up through the, the, the pages organically. So budget a smallish amount, small to some people is a lot to others, but around about for us, $300 a month worked quite well in the start. And that will get your presence on Google straight away, which will in turn start bringing in money. And you know, three hundred dollars a month, you get three or four jobs, depending on what they are. That pays for that straight away, so it's very much worth it. And at some point, your website will be there, and you can, if you want to, if you've got enough work, you can cut back on the Google Ads or turn them off altogether. You'll get to a point where you won't even want a website up there. You'll have so much work. So, yeah. So, website-wise, definitely get a professional to do it. Budget a little bit for Google Ads, or a lot if you want, and you know budget even more the more you budget I guess the more the more Google will promote you so in you know that should translate to more work it doesn't always but it should do so you want to be aiming for about yeah when you start you'll be in around the $40 an hour probably but you want to be aiming for a minimum of 50 to 60 60 as a bare minimum and as you get quicker and you get more experienced and your quality your quality goes up you'll be charging more than that for sure so your website your logo your branding your colors all of it needs to represent what you want to charge you know there's a lot of people out there doing this now and there's a lot of lot of guys out there charging 30 bucks an hour and i'm not you shouldn't be and i'm not interested in competing with those guys whatsoever but they are they're there so if you want to get 60 bucks an hour your website your logo your brand your the first thing that people see needs to represent what you want to achieve that's why I'm saying it's so important to spend a bit of money and get a professional to do these things because that initial impact, that initial uh, look that a customer gets will, will put a value on what you're worth. It shouldn't do, but it does. So if you come across extremely professional from the offset, then you can charge the prices that you want to charge going forward. And, you know, initial impressions, they make a big difference. So if you turn up in a clapped out old ute without a uniform on, you know, a pair of shorts on a pair of thongs and you've got a clapped out old whippersnipper and you know there's your 30 bucks an hour but if you want to earn 60 as a bare minimum 
do the right things in the start, set yourself up, and then you'll be flying. So I think that's probably enough for this video. Um, I've touched on most things, it's kind of getting dark now. So um, I thought I just saw a koala bear up there. It was a bird. What was it? No, it was a bird. Um, so yeah, I hope that's been helpful for you guys. And if you've got any questions, let me know down below, of course. But um, for the time being, we'll wrap it up there. And then I think that covers most of the things you need to kind of get started with your business. So I've talked about the tools, the vehicles, the, the online presence, and how to kind of get that going. One of the, oh, the other, another important thing is your insurances. Don't forget your insurances, your liability insurance and tool insurance and things like that. But, Maybe we'll talk about that in a separate video because it's probably getting a bit long this one now. So if you enjoyed this video guys, please give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that stuff. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate that as well. And um, yeah, I think that covers pretty much everything for now. In the next video, we'll talk about the client management, scheduling, and um, how to do Google ads and that, that kind of admin side of things a bit more. So yeah, anyway, thank you. And I'll see you on the next one. Just wanted to jump in here because I forgot to mention earlier about the importance of social media and YouTube and, and Instagram mostly. When you start out, it's good to make contact with all the people in the industry on, well, I found Instagram really great. There's a great community on there. So jump on Instagram, like and follow and communicate and, and get involved with all the people in there, on there that have been doing it for a lot longer than you have. And um, you know, you'll learn a lot from just seeing their posts watching how they do things, watching the tools they buy and what they recommend and things like that. So definitely get on social media if you that that way inclined. Some people don't like it, but I think for a business, um, Instagram and YouTube have been pretty helpful for me uh, through the years. So I'd highly recommend them. See ya.